us. The Northwest University students in the engineering faculty have come up with a new way to screen pupils for COVID-19 using cell phones. Now, this technology breakthrough will quickly digitize the data capturing process when learners return to school. Joining us to expand a little bit more is Professor Lienta Krobla from the Northwest University. Professor, a very good morning to you and thank you for your time. Really fantastic initiative this. Uh, talk us through how you came up with such an idea and exactly how it will work. I'm the mother of three small children, one of which is in primary school. And we live in Potchefstroom and it is very cold. And when we thought about the, the possibility of going back to school and to work, we realized that temperature screening will definitely make a, out a very large portion of that. And we realized that if you want to do that traditionally by hand, like most things in school are done, then it would mean very long queues outside the schoolyard um, to just get the screening done in the mornings. And that's time that should be spent on learning and not standing around in queues. And especially since Poch is so cold, I can just imagine those little bodies standing outside um, waiting. So that is what inspired us, and that is why we came up with the solution to digitize this screening process. Now, it says it's a screening and data recording kit. How exactly will it work? Well, um, we, at this stage, we provide, um, ask the, uh, the schools to provide us with an Excel sheet that is used just to make ID cards for the students. If they already had a barcode ID like um, adults, we could have used that ID um, badge to, to identify them. But we provide an ID card and the ID card is then used to identify the pupil when they get to a screening station. We use a normal handheld temperature device, so no added in, um, technology is needed or expensive technology that is not already included um, at, in most of the kits that were sent to the schools. We then use the cell phone camera to record or to take a picture of that, that thermometer screen, and we use image recognition to automatically identify the um, temperature reading within that photograph, and then we then store that. Um, it is also recorded whether or not a student is wearing a mask or whether one is provided to them. The reason for that is that the school can be able to have a log of how many masks were distributed so that they can order new ones in time um, as they see their stocks are getting low. And what we've done since we started the pilots on Monday, we started pilots on Monday with local schools, teachers, we realized that we also need to include the um, questionnaire of the Department of Health. So we now also include those questions um, within the app. So on a daily basis, we can then ask the, the student the um, predefined questions and we then record that already. You, you, you speak about how this um, initiative is a great time um, saver when it comes to ensuring that learners quickly are able to move in and be screened um, a lot quicker. There have also been questions as schools prepare to open on the 1st of June about the accuracy of a lot of the uh, temperature devices that are being rolled out across the schools. Now, comparing this uh, device, uh, this creative innovation, to the normal temperature assessors that are being used and rolled out, what are the major differences besides the time factor? Um, there's no difference in that regard, unfortunately, since we use the reading from the thermometer that the school already has. Um, it is very unfortunate to notice that there are a number of fake products that have flooded the, the system right across the world of thermometers that weren't accurate or didn't even contain um, any um, parts apart from a screen that, that displays an image. Um, at this stage, we're trying our best to assist schools that contact us and ask us whether they um, these are accurate to help them assess whether or not it is accurate. 
but unfortunately that's a very big shortcoming at this stage. Mm. You speak as a, a professional but you also mentioned that uh, you're a mother who has concerns of course as the schools open and ensuring that children continue to remain safe and healthy. What are some uh, perhaps a word of advice that you could give to other mothers and other professionals who may have the same concerns? <laughs> that's a very difficult question. Um, I think even as informed as I am, I'm really read up on the pandemic and how it functions right across the world and how people are dealing with it. And even I can tell you that every 30 minutes it seems as if I have a different opinion about what is the right thing to do. Um, <laughs> I think this is the most challenging thing that I had to, to deal with in terms of my kids to decide whether or not it is safe to have them go back. On one end, um, I think it is um, it, we're doing all, taking all the precautions, and I live in a low risk area. Um, but on the other end, it's something that we we constantly learn more about. So advice is just <laughs> I don't think I have advice. I think I have the deepest empathy with every single parent in this country needs to do the protect decision.